In our last episode, we, well, subtracted. Okay, it's not as easy as it sounds because we did it in binary. And if you remember, the process of borrows and so forth made subtraction possibly a little complicated. For example, if I was to subtract 1 from a binary number 1000000000, then that would have created an enormous number of borrows. And the hardware to do that, while possible, really is not as simple as the addition hardware, which only goes a carry from column to column to column. So, what would be really cool is if we could perform subtractions with additions. And in fact, that is going to be possible. It's going to be possible with something we refer to as mathematical complements. And mathematical complements basically allow us to use the same digits that we use to represent positive numbers to also represent negative numbers. But there are two things that we need to handle first. The first thing that we need to handle is this ability to, well, know whether a number is negative or positive. I'll show you how that's done in a moment. But that process requires us to have a fixed number of digits. Let's do something in tens complement. And I'm going to do a quick subtraction. How about 5,283 minus 2,946? All right. Should be easy, right? Well, first of all, can't subtract 6 from 3 without a borrow. So we're going to borrow 1 from 8. Make that 13. 13 minus 6, that's 7. 7 minus 4, I can do that, that's 3. 2 minus 9, can't do that, need to borrow from this 5. All right, so the 5 becomes a 4, and then we make the 2 a 12. 12 minus 9, that is 3. 4 minus 2, that is a 2. So, 5,283 minus 2,946 is 2,337. Now, what we can do is actually fix the number of digits we've got and replace this, this minus sign right here with a negative sign for 2,946 as a digit instead. Let me show you this kind of interesting process. What we are going to do is we're going we're gonna, to, um, well, it's going to be a digit by digit by digit operation. First thing we're going to do is we are going to subtract each digit from 9, from the decimal 9, to create a new number or a new value. Then we're going to add 1 to that new value. And since the words don't describe it all that well, probably would be good to go ahead and do an example. So we're going to negate this 2,946. But the key is we do have to limit the number of digits we're going to use. So let's go ahead and say right up front we're going to limit the number of digits to six digits. Six digits. So this 2,946 becomes... Zero zero not oops, zero zero not quite zero zero two nine four six. All right. Now the first step was to subtract each digit from nine in order to get the digits of our new value. Okay. So six nine six taken out of nine is three. 4 taken out of 9 is 5, 9 taken out of 9 is 0, 2 taken out of 9 is 7, 0 taken out of 9 is 9, 0 taken out of 9 is 9. So what we've done is we have effectively found this kind of complement, so to speak, of each one of those digits. But the last step is to add 1 to that new value. So we're going to add 1 to this 997053. 1 plus 3 is 4, 
and then we have 50799, nine, read backwards, right to left with that particular number. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this new value, which is the complement, the tens complement of 2,946 in six digits. That's the key is it's in six digits. Now, I'm going to add it to 005283, making this number, 5,283, into a six-digit number two. I put leading zeros. And I'm going to add it to 997054. All right. Now let's go ahead and do this addition. 3 plus 4 is 7. 8 plus 5 is 13. 1 plus 2 plus 0 is 3. 5 plus 7 is, uh, what is it, 12, right? 1 plus 9 is 0. Carry the 1. 1 plus 9 is 10 carry the one, then we're going to disregard that one because it went outside of the fixed number of digits that we have. Looking at this, this six digit value, 002337, is the same thing as our result after the subtraction. So 997054 is the complement of 002946. All right. I know it may not make a lot of sense, but basically picture this, old school telephone dials. If you want to go backwards in the dial from, say, a 9 to a 4, subtract 5, right? That's the same thing as going forward by 4, the complement. So all we're doing is instead of going backwards with the subtraction, is we're going forward and all the way around with an addition. Second thing that's really important here, you see this 9 here? That 9 is going to be the sine digit. This digit right here is not part of the magnitude. It is just a representation of the sine. If there's a 9 in that sixth digit, it's a negative number. If there's a 0 in that first digit, it's a positive number. If there's any other digit there, whenever we've done a computation, that meant that we needed more digits than we had. We would have gone beyond, overflowed the values that we had. Turns out this works with binary. There's just a minor change that needs to be done. In order to make this work for binary, what I need to do is change that 9 to a 1. That's the only thing I've got to do. Just change that 9 to a 1. So by changing that 9 to a 1, we're going to be able to come up with the complement of our um, the complement of our uh, uh, of our binary value. Now, in a previous lesson, we did subtraction in binary. We did what was it? 108 minus 90 gave us 18. What did that look like in binary? Well, the way it worked was, let's see, 108 was, what was that? Uh, 0, 1, 1, that's what, uh, 64 plus 32 is 96. Uh, 0, and then we have 8, that gives us 104 plus 4. That gives us 108. So we had 108 there. And then 90, well, 90 was, let's see, there was a 64 in it. Uh, there was a 16 in it. That brought us up to 80. There was an 8, that's 88. And then we had a 2. That made it for a total of 90. All right. So we did 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 minus 1. Can't do it. So we have to do a borrow from the next highest column. And then we put a 1 in front of this 0 to give us 2. 2 minus 1 was 1. 0 minus 0 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 minus 1. Once again, can't do it. So we borrow from the next highest column. That gives us 1, 0. Then the 1, 0 minus 1 is 1. 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. So we've got 16 plus 2. Guess what? That equals 18. Well, the problem here is that the, we have this really complicated process of doing subtraction with borrows. Whenever you do a borrow in binary, it is possible that we are going to run that borrow all the way up 
to the highest value, to the highest, most significant digit. Well, in doing that, it makes for very complex hardware. And the complex hardware is also slow. So why don't we do something that's a little bit quicker just by taking advantage of this complementary math and figure out, well, we talked about this before. If in base 10, I can subtract each digit from nine to create the new value and then add one to that new value and that gives us the complement, can we do the same with binary? Well, let's take a look at 90 real quick. We talked about 90 being 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, right? So we have 64 plus 16, that's 80. 88, 80 uh, plus 2 is 80, <clears throat> is 90, excuse me. So if doing this in binary is merely a process of subtracting each digit from 1 to get that new value that we're going to then add 1 to, well, turns out anytime you subtract a 0 from 1, it becomes a 1. Anytime you subtract a 1 from 1, it becomes 0. So basically all we're doing is we're flipping all those bits. That's all we're doing. So the 0 becomes a 1, the 1 becomes a 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. And what we've got here is the inverse to which we are going to add one. And when we add one to this, what happens is, well, let's try and see if I can do this in what little board space I've got left. So we've got one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, right? And we're gonna add one to it. One plus one is zero, carry the one. One plus zero is one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, that just all drops down. Let's take this value and add it to our 108. So I've got one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero. And let's take a moment, clean things up a little bit. I don't need any of these borrows up here anymore, right? Those guys are all gonna just be the original value. So we have our 108. So, now, what we've got is our binary complement. It's actually called, it's got a name, it's called the twos complement. So, the twos complement, when we take the negative of our 90, 90 being right there, we first flip all the bits, and then we add one to that new value, this right here represents negative 90. Now, if you remember, I talked about positive base 10 being started with a zero and negative base 10 being started with a nine. Look at our values here whenever it comes to binary. 90 starts with a zero, negative 90 starts with a one. So this number right here is positive 90. This number right here is negative 90. So what we've got is 108 plus negative 90. What are we gonna equal? Well, let's just do the addition. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. One plus one is zero. Carry the one. One plus one plus zero is zero. Carry the one. One plus zero plus zero is one. 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 0 is 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. Now in this twos complement arithmetic, we are going to ignore the carry. We will need to go through a process to figure out if this result is valid. In other words, was there an overflow? We'll talk about that in a later episode. But basically, we got the same thing, right? This is 16, this is 2, 16 plus 2, and that's 18. That's a quick example of some complementary math. We'll do a little bit more when we start doing more examples of 2's complement.